This is a story of deception, lazy literature, and blatant manipulation. <laughs> so, <laughs> drama. There are two stats being recycled around in the literature right now. I have seen these figures used repeatedly in the introductions and literature reviews of papers, but I've never actually investigated it on a deep level until today. And let me tell you, <laughs> this is a roller coaster. So this is gonna be a bit back and forth, but I'm gonna take you on the journey and what this was actually like to get to the truth. So stick with me on this journey, because this is absolutely fascinating. All right, first let's focus on the 75% mortality statistic, and we'll go from there. So the first citation for this statistic came up for this Murdoch University page. I thought, this is strange. This kind of looks like a piece of gray literature. Sometimes universities have things like theses on these repositories on a page that looks kind of like this. But if we actually follow the URI, it just refreshes the page. So I thought, okay, I will search the title in Scholar and see what other thing comes up. And that takes you to a ResearchGate page. But as you can see on this ResearchGate page, there's not actually a paper available. There's no full text available. So it's kind of just nothing. There's nothing there. So you actually have to request the text from them. So I actually did that, but I have not heard back. And probably once I see that it's reptiles and research, I doubt they're going to give me the full text. So we'll leave that there, I think. Now the second stat was actually quite dubious. One of the first citations of this 70% stat comes from a citation from Warwick himself. So he's self-citing again. And then it takes us to this paper. Well, I say paper, this isn't a paper. This is more like an editorial note to the editor, where again, we can see it's citing the 70% mortality rate. If we actually investigate the citations he's provided here, used to support these stats, it's either Peter articles that don't exist anymore, <laughs> Danish Peter articles that don't exist anymore, or it's a self-citation stating pet trade, pet hate, biologists, supporting data available from Warwick. So essentially it's the same non-existent article from before. The citation for evidence of the 70% stat is really interesting. It's the case study of a wildlife wholesaler in Texas who was prosecuted for neglect. Over a six week period, mortality rates at this wholesaler was 72%. During the proceedings against the dealer, part of the trader's defense was saying that 70% mortality rate was standard in the industry. So because this dealer tried to do a, oh, it's not just me plea, and try to make out like his huge mortality rates were normal, animal rights have taken this 70% stat and him saying it's normal and ran with it. And mind you, the defense cited 70% of companion animals, not, not reptiles, companion animals. Even out of the 72% in the six week period at this wholesaler, that was not reptiles. This was including invertebrates, amphibians, and mammals. So to cite this case proceedings as 70% of reptiles die in the trade is a deceitful manipulation of the stat. Then they go on to say this. For example, a recent study of companion reptiles in the United Kingdom showed that premature mortality was 75% within the first year in the home and 81% if losses at retailers are included. Now they cite this Toland Warwick and Arena 2012. Again, this is a non-existent study that when Warwick even cites it himself, it's not a proper citation, it's a, oh, a message me for more details. It, it's just a circle of self-citation going round and round in circles. Now here's the real kicker. Back in 2012, World Animal Protection partnered with Lush, the cosmetics brand, to do an anti-reptile keeping campaign. And in this campaign, they cited this whole first year stat and how the hobby was like driving reptiles to extinction and things like this, things of that order of magnitude they were saying. Now, complaints were made to the Advertising Standards Authority. Now, I'm gonna have to read this bit. And the ad was deemed to breach CAP code Edition 11, clauses 3.1, substantiation, and 7.1, truthfulness. So basically, they were caught out lying, and the ad was banned from being shown. So they've previously been proven to not be able to prove this stat, and the ad was banned, yet they carry on citing this as if it's evidence. So now you might be wondering, so what is the actual mortality rate in the trade? Well, well in 2015, Doral Institute of Conservation and Ecology 
published a paper. This paper suggests that mortality rates in the home were actually quite low, at 3.6%. This is a combined percentage of 0.7% for snakes, 1.1% for lizards, and 0.03% for chelonians. They further cited that whilst the data is limited, the only broadly comparable available study estimated that over a one year period in the US, 8.3% and 7.9% of cats and dogs died respectively. Of course, this is a very old study, but it's the only thing that can be compared to it of the same nature. For the actual studies we have that are not just campaign articles for World Health Protection, it's these two. Now this Durrell paper actually cited the 75% stat by saying the following. In contrast, a much higher mortality of over 75% was obtained based on the difference between the estimated number of reptiles coming into the UK and the estimated number in the home. So that article that I couldn't access because it wasn't actually an article and it was just this Clifford Warwick bloke saying contact me for data, that's what they did. This is hardly very thorough and you could imagine the amount of reptile keepers that don't report that they keep reptiles, especially if they're in like housing situations that don't allow reptiles. You know how many stories there are of landlords not liking snakes in the house and stuff. So to go ahead and just work out, oh, there's this amount coming in and this amount in the home estimated and say, oh, 75% of them must be dying is the most crude and basic <laughs> thing I've seen. More research is definitely needed on all of this, but it certainly isn't reptiles dying right, left and centre like World Animal Protection wants to convince people of. Neither the 75% or the 70% stat can be substantiated. They've got nothing to actually back it up with. They're just campaign propaganda that goes round and round in circles, self-citing and actually very poor writing. If I had done half the things I see in these articles, like self-citing or citing Peter articles and not actually white literature or studies, I would have gotten a very low grade for an assignment in university. So for this to be actually out in peer-reviewed literature boggles the mind of how any of this slipped past peer review. I don't know how you can give the green light to something where the same bloke cites himself 20 times and it <laughs> like this it just isn't science. <laughs> Again subscribe for more videos like this defending the hobby. I will say I'm not just going to rabidly bark and defend the hobby no matter if a generally good article comes out and it identifies an issue like I have said in the past then it's the hobby's duty to rectify that issue not just deny it outright but when it's articles like this it needs to be debunked because it's utter manipulation.